Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making gluten-free whoopie pies, pumpkin whoopie pies, since it's fall here in New England. And this was always one of the most popular recipes in my bakery. Everybody loves a good whoopie pie. They're, it's a very popular treat in New England. It's also a very popular treat in um, Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Dutch. Traditionally, whoopie pies are chocolate, but this version here is a pumpkin spice version. So very simple. I'm going to get right to it. We're going to make the whoopie pie batter and bake off the whoopie pies. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a very traditional American buttercream for the filling. And we'll talk a little bit more about fillings when we get there. So as usual, I have all of my ingredients pre-weighed out. I always weigh everything. It is much more accurate than measuring and really important for gluten-free baking. Switching to using a scale and weighing your ingredients instead of measuring them is the number one thing you can do to improve your gluten-free baking results. So I highly suggest getting a kitchen scale. They're inexpensive and very easy to learn how to use. So I'm starting here. You can do this by hand or with a mixer. I prefer to do it with a mixer, either a stand mixer or a little handheld mixer because we're gonna start off by creaming just like we do for many cookie recipes. So I have my brown sugar and my butter and we're just gonna cream these together into the well incorporated in it a little bit fluffy. We're not gonna go crazy. So you just wanna get them really well mixed together so there's no lumps, no spots of just sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Because of the proportions of butter to sugar, it's never gonna get going to get to that really light, fluffy that you see sometimes when you're creaming something like a cake because a lot of moisture in the recipe is gonna come from the pumpkin. So this is what our creamed mixture looks like here. It's just really well mixed together, okay? And that's the stage we want it at. If you're using a stand mixer, I suggest scraping your bowl down and your paddle at this point to make sure you have no stray lumps of butter. And then we're just gonna add in our eggs one at a time. And you're just gonna mix until each egg is fully incorporated before you add the next egg. Making sure everything's really well emulsified, that's important. So now I can add my second egg. Okay, so both my eggs are all incorporated. I'll just again show you what this looks like now. It's looking more like a nice creamy emulsified batter. Again, with all recipes, this, this recipe and all baking recipes, unless the recipe specifies otherwise, make sure your ingredients are room temperature. This is really important for being able to get the butter and the eggs and everything well emulsified together so it doesn't separate out into little pieces. So I'm just gonna whip this a little longer as I add my vanilla. These would actually be good with a little splash of bourbon thrown in there too, or in the frosting. Okay, so now that I have that all mixed really well, I'm just gonna set that to the side for a minute and move on to our next step. So here I have my flour, I have all my dry ingredients and I'm gonna mix them together. You can do them depending on what you have your flour weighed into or into a separate bowl. So my flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and all of my spices. And I'm just gonna give that a whisk and make sure that it's all really well mixed together. We want everything well combined again so we don't get any clumps of baking powder, baking soda, or spice in any one whoopie pie. We want everything well distributed. The devil's in the details I like to always say about baking. It's the little details paying attention to things like this that make the difference from being a good baker to being a great baker. So now that I have that mixed, our last step is to take our pumpkin. So this is just canned pumpkin. You can make your own pumpkin puree. If you wanted to do that, you would want to roast your pumpkins in the oven, then scrape the flesh until they're really, really soft. Scrape the flesh out and puree it. You don't want to boil them or cook, steam them uh, for something like this because your, their puree will end up too loose and with too much moisture in it. It should be a nice thick puree just like what would come out of a can. Or like I said, you can use any canned pumpkin or even canned butternut squash. So I'm just mixing this again together really well and set that to the side. And now we're just gonna combine everything together. So starting with my flour, I'm gonna start and end with my flour. I'm gonna do about three introductions. So I'm gonna put in about a third of my flour and just give it a little mix to get that well mixed in. Then I'll add half of my pumpkin mixture, some more flour, the rest of my pumpkin mixture, and then the end of my flour. All right, that's it. So now I can add in, I'm gonna add in about half of the pumpkin mixture and give this a mix. At this point, I'm gonna stop. Again, if you're using your stand mixer, I'd give it a really good scrape. I'm just gonna scrape my bowl a little bit to make sure everything from the bottom and all the way around that everything is getting really well incorporated. When you start to add your pumpkin, it can sometimes look as if it's separating a little bit and that's just from the difference from the pumpkin and the sugar butter mix. As we keep going, it will smooth itself out. So don't worry. So now I'm gonna add another third of my flour mixture and mix again. And now the last of my pumpkin. Make sure you scrape really well, get it all in. We don't wanna leave anything in the bowl. And now the end of my flour. 
Okay, so my batter is all mixed together. Just gonna get everything I can off of the beaters. Put those aside. And then I'm gonna take my spatula again one more time, really go around the edge of my bowl and right down to the bottom and make sure I don't have any lumps of anything hiding out anywhere. And I'll show you what this looks like. You can see now this is this nice, smooth, emulsified batter. So I'm gonna set this aside to rest for about 30 minutes. Again, if you're using Better Batter Original, you can get away with a little bit less time. And then we'll come back and portion these out onto the tray. While this is sitting to the side, we'll move on to making our filling, which is gonna be a traditional American buttercream. Okay, so for the American buttercream, so whoopie pies traditionally are filled with, there's a few options, an ermine buttercream, which is made by making a roux with flour, or a traditional American buttercream, and some people fill them with a frosting that includes marshmallow cream or marshmallow fluff. I like to use a traditional American buttercream, which is what I'm gonna be showing you how to make today. In this recipe, I am using unsalted butter, a combination of unsalted butter and shortening. I find that gives you, this gives you a very stable buttercream. So this buttercream is tested, um, passed the test by Cottage Laws as shelf stable. So it will hold for quite a few days at room temperature, unless it's like, you know, 95 degrees out, but it holds very well. Most, um, all shortening in the US now is trans fat free. So if you're worried about that, there was a law passed years ago, it is all trans fat free. If you're looking for one that's more natural, you can find spectrum shortening. Um, of the major commercial brands, I like Crisco the best. It has the nicest mouthfeel to it. It's not like very plasticky or anything. And really from a health standpoint, if you use any of the vegan butters, they're all really margarine. This is not any different as far as from a health standpoint. So again, I like to use a combination for American buttercream, a combination of butter and shortening. If you prefer to go all butter, by all means go ahead. It's just gonna have a much more buttery, almost overpowering buttery taste, but this is personal preference. So we're gonna start by adding our unsalted butter right into our stand mixer. You can do this with a hand mixer if you like, but I really prefer a stand mixer if you have one. And then I'm going to add in my shortening. It's equal parts of butter and shortening. And this recipe along with the full whoopie pie recipe are both linked below the video. You can find them both on my website. So in goes my shortening. And then I'm just gonna add my paddle attachment and we're gonna cream these together. I have both of these at room temperature so my butter's nice and soft. So I'm not gonna end up with any lumps and everything's just gonna mix together really nicely. So we're just gonna get it going on a low speed to start. You're just going to cream this for a minute or so, a few minutes until the butter and shortening are well mixed together. You'll want to stop and scrape down your bowl at least once. Okay, so our butter and shortening is looking nicely mixed together. So I'm just going to give the bowl a quick scrape down. Just want to make sure that you don't have anything clinging to the sides before we start adding our sugar. And again, it's a good way to double check you have no lumps. And then I'm going to add in a portion of the sugar. I'm going to go slow with the sugar. Um, you can use a towel to cover this to make sure sugar doesn't splash back at you if you're in a rush or adding a large amount of sugar at once, but if you add too much, just know it's gonna come right back at you. So again, I'm starting this on a low speed and I'm just gonna keep mixing it on a medium to low speed so I can gradually add in the rest of my sugar until all of the sugar is in the bowl. So now that all of our sugar is in the bowl, I'm just gonna let this keep mixing until it's all mixed together. It's quite thick at this point. And then I'm gonna drizzle in a little bit of water. You'll see in the recipe, there's a range of water and that's because it depends how thick you want this when you're working with it. I always keep it on the thicker side because it's very easy to thin at the end when you're done. So I'm gonna stop it now and just give it a, a quick scrape down. You can never scrape your bowl down too many times when you're making anything like frosting or batter. You want everything really well mixed. We don't want any lumps. So we're gonna just give it a quick scrape down. Then I'm going to add my vanilla and just a tiny bit more water because I can tell that this is super thick. I don't need it quite this thick, but I'm still gonna keep it on the thicker side. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more water and my vanilla while the mixer's running. And then I'm just gonna let this mix for 10 minutes on medium speed and that part is important. You don't wanna whip it too high, it will get too much air in it. On a nice medium speed for 10 minutes, you're gonna notice it gradually gets whiter, it's gonna get smoother, this is gonna help it not to be gritty and have everything really nicely well incorporated. Okay, so this has been mixing for its 10 minutes. We're gonna take this down, scrape the bowl really well, and I will show you what the consistency looks like. So I'm just scraping everything off of my paddle. And you can see what the consistency is here. It's nice and fluffy, it's pretty thick. You want it pretty thick because we want it to hold its shape inside of the whoopie pies. You can either scoop it or 
pipe it, which I'll show you when we get to the end. So I'm gonna put this all away into a container, put it to the side, and I will come back and we will scoop out our whoopie pies and get them in the oven to bake. So I have my batter here that's been sitting for half an hour. We're gonna move on to scooping. A quick little trick, if you're using parchment paper, you can use either parchment or silpat, is to take a tiny bit of batter and underneath your parchment to stick it to the sheet tray in each corner. And this will keep the paper from moving around on you as you're scooping and as they're baking in the oven, it'll keep the paper from flying up. So I'm just gonna use, I'm using a about an ounce and a half scoop today because I wanna make small-ish. These are still gonna spread quite a bit. They're gonna be about this big. So you can make these any size you like. You wanna make big jumbo ones you can, you wanna make little tiny mini ones you can. The reason I'm just kind of knocking it on here is a little bit to get a little bit of the extra bubbles out and make sure I'm really filling my scoop evenly. You can also stir your batter up a little bit if you've noticed that it's got a lot of bubbles in it. You don't want too many air bubbles when you scoop your whoopie pies. I'm spacing these with a good few inches in between, again, because they are gonna spread. They're gonna almost double in size. Depending on your cookie sheet, what size you're using will depend how many you can fit. On this tray, I'm gonna fit just about eight, and this is a standard half sheet cookie tray. Once we have them all scooped, I try to keep them pretty nice and round as I'm scooping, just the way that I you know, put the scoop down and lift it up, because then we're gonna need to flatten them and I like to keep them as round as possible. So I'm using the back of a spoon and I like to spray just a little bit of oil on it. I'm using avocado oil and that just helps it from, from sticking. And I'm just gonna spread these to about that thickness. Spread them to the thickness you imagine you want your final whoopie pies to be, they're, they're gonna end up a little bit thicker maybe than this because they're gonna spread out, but they also are gonna puff up a little bit. If it starts sticking to your spoon, just add a little more oil. You can also just use your fingers. So put on a glove or wash your hands and get some spray on your fingers. And you can also use your fingers to do this step, which sometimes is actually quicker and easier than dealing with the spoon. And this is probably the most tedious part of the whole recipe. But you wanna keep them as even thickness as you can. Keep that in mind again also as you're spreading them out. Even thickness, so they bake evenly. And again, shape as round as you can. We'll match them up afterwards. You always end up with some of them slightly different shapes, but I just kinda of match them all up into pairs afterwards. So once we have, we're gonna to continue to do this with all of our batter and pop them in the oven to bake. I always check them after half of my baking time. Check and see how they're doing. Everyone's oven is different. Sometimes your oven acts up, so it's a good idea. Whatever the baking time recommended is in any recipe, I always set my first timer for half of the total recommended time just to give everything a quick check. So again, I'm gonna finish up and continue to do this with all of the rest of my batter. Pop them in the oven and bake them, and I will come back to show you how we assemble. Okay, so our whoopie pies are out of the oven and I'm just gonna show you a few things. So you can see they got bigger in size. They didn't quite double, but they puffed up a bit and they maybe they're about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more bigger all the way around than they were. But I wanna show you the difference here in the way they went into the pan. So these first ones here, first of all, you know they're done when you touch them and they spring back when you touch them lightly, okay? These ones here, I smoothed really well on the top with oil. Made sure I had a good amount of oil on my spoon so you can see how nice and smooth they are. These ones, I just kind of roughly smoothed with the top of the spoon, not worrying about getting them perfectly evenly and I didn't use quite as much oil so that the top wasn't perfectly smooth when they went into the oven. And these ones here, I didn't knock the air out of the batter as much. So these were the first few I scooped before I knocked the air out of the batter. I just wanted you to see all of them are fine. All of them will taste delicious. They just look different. So it really depends how picky you are and about what look you want. These look a little more rustic. These are a little more smooth and perfect. So it really depends on personal preference. So now we're gonna move on to the filling portion. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna pair them up. So you, I always look to find ones that are in similar size and then I'm going to fill my pastry bag with buttercream and we'll move right on to filling some of these whoopie pies. I'm just gonna demonstrate with a few. So I'm gonna show you today using a pastry bag. You don't need to, you could just use the same size scoop that you use to scoop your actual whoopie pies and put one scoop of filling in the middle and squish them down to sandwich them together. Or if you prefer, I think it's faster and they look a little bit neater and more uniform is to take your 
buttercream and put it into a pastry bag. So I'm just putting it this into a pastry bag fitted with a plain round tip. If you want to do a star tip or something, that's personally up to you, personal preference. So now that I have my buttercream into my bag, I'm just going to take my whoopie pie and I usually make the filling go right up about an eighth of an inch from the edge because when you press down your top cookie, it'll spread a little bit to the edge and there we have a nice perfect sandwich cookie. So I'm going to just show you with one more and again how much filling you put in is really personal preference too. I like to put the filling about equal thickness to one half. So then we end up with a ratio of kind of twice as much cake to filling. But again, that's very much personal preference. And on goes my top cookie again. And there's my perfect little sandwich. So I hope you love this recipe, have lots of fun with it. Again, you can get creative with your filling. You can use American buttercream. You can use cream cheese frosting, ermine buttercream. You can flavor your buttercream. It's delicious with a chai spice buttercream, a maple buttercream, uh, plain old vanilla. Caramel is also really nice with pumpkin. So I hope you enjoy this recipe and I'll see you next time.